Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley. Today's video is going to be about the stick evolution. So one of the subscribers asked me if I can make this video. I have here kind of like a timeline of sticks. And to the best of my knowledge, I mean, I might not be accurate on this and I do apologize, but I'm going to try my best. And what I've done is I picked out certain sticks that kind of go with a timeline, even blades. And I don't really have much blades. And I really don't have many sticks. Well, shafts I do, but regular sticks, I don't have that many wooden ones. So whatever I have, I'm gonna start with. And here's the first one. This is early 1900s. This is a game used supposedly before NHL. This is a real stick and it's short. Back then they used them shorter and you can see it's bowed from its age, it's old. Well over 100 years, 120 years old. Uh, it's got, you know, one piece. It's carved out of one piece of wood. And they did have friction tape back then. So, but it's out of one piece of wood, as you can see. Look at how thick the blade is. I mean, we've, got, we've come a long ways with sticks. So that's a thick, thick blade. Compared to the thinner ones, um, it's a little bit more. It's an eighth of an inch thicker. So that's the first one. The next one I have is a probably 1960s, late 60s. And look at this. This is Dennis Hull's stick. So what happened, if you see the first one, that's a straight blade. So the curve wasn't invented to the early 60s. Stan Mikita by accident bent one of the sticks. He, he got mad, he slammed it down and it turned into like this, like a curve. Then he took another shot and this was in practice at Chicago Stadium. So the curve happened, the curve was invented. He took one shot and it was a rocket. After that, they started heating up the blades. Him and Bobby Hull started that. And you could see they used a torch to heat this up. They didn't have heat guns. They were using actually fl actual flame. And then it bend them in a the door jam or wherever. So this was the stick. There was um, fiberglass reinforcement. So fiberglass came out on these sticks. Back then there was fiberglass reinforcement, as you can see. See, it's a laminated fiberglass with a wooden in there, inner wooden. So it wasn't like a couple of pieces of plied wood. It's just one piece of wood that's been shaved. And then they added the blade to it like a kind of like TNG tongue and groove. They just added it in, as you can see right there. That's how they made the sticks. And it was very square heel, you know, square toe. There wasn't people using rounded toe. So the next one is similar to what Wayne would have used in his rookie year, the Red Titan. This is made in Finland. And these were great for outdoor use too. As you can see here, it has the ABS plastic. And I asked, what does Karu mean? Because Karu company actually made Canadian Coho Jofa CCM back then. They made a CCM, I think, joined later. But uh, see, uh, those companies, and Karu meant it's a bear. And then the bear was the name, Karu. And you can see this one has a ply of wood. This has started probably maybe mid 70s, started using ply wood. Like you can see two, three layers of wood. And you know, my, the Titans, they were have many laminates layers of wood inside under the paint. And I don't know if I could show you, you know, I didn't cut this one, this one's not cut, but there's many layers of wood. So I added, made it more durable. These were, these were very heavy, but they were durable. So that's what happened there. So this is like late seventies. Now we're getting into the eighties, 1980s. Canadian was one of the most popular brands, 6,001. Lots of players used this. So now we're getting into the fiber, fiberglass wood combination, fiberglass shaft. As you can see, the outer layer is fiberglass sandwich is wood in between. And this gave it good flexibility at like a kick point. So players weren't thinking about flex back then. They just needed something that felt right. And obviously these, you can bend them. 
No problem. Like with the Titan there, you can't really bend it with flame. You'd have to use like hot water or a heat gun. But with these, with the fiberglass outer, there was no problem bending them with fire, with torch. And at this time, you know, guys had custom curves. They weren't straight blades anymore. We're talking 80s. So the next one to it is a Sherwood 7000. So Sherwood 7000, this came out probably, this stick right here was out probably like uh, 1995. This one's brand new. It's actually my pattern. <laughs> and uh, this one here has the fiberglass outer again. And companies were similar. They didn't make them exact feather glass. So they used a lot of fiberglass on theirs as well with wood. I'm not sure what kind of wood Sherwood used, but they, they make great sticks. Al McGinnis used this model also. At the time of the 80s, and the 7000 was around in the 90s a lot. And 84, NHL approved of players using a two-piece aluminum. So aluminum was invented to, for sticks in 84. Christian was the first company, and maybe Canadian or Christian, I'm not exactly sure. This is where I'm not 100% sure which company came out, but Christian decided to do aluminum sticks. And they were making wood sticks. The Christian brothers, the I think the father played in the 1960 Olympics, and Dave Christian played in the NHL. So they have a company in Minnesota. They, they made sticks for many years. They made a great product too. And so this was approved by the NHL. It even says it right here. So this was one of the first model shafts, aluminum, right here. And at the time, blades weren't as popular. So you couldn't just go to every store and find blades. They weren't as easy to find. And even Christian made blades. So they're, this is similar to what Christian made. They just didn't have this stuff in the beginning. They just had a simple blade. And Sherwood was making blades too. Canadian was making blades. We're talking in the 80s. Um, so they, they didn't have tapered. It was everything was standard. Just a typical standard blade, you know, hosel. So there was no tapered. And this one's the Jeff O'Neill's blade. The guy they call O-Dog on TSN. This is his actual game used blade. So that's the aluminum. And aluminum was out probably till you know mid 90s maybe they're still making them and then graphite came out 1993 innovative got on the market a golf company split with one owner being a hockey guy and the other one is a golf guy so they split the company in half and uh innovative started making graphite shafts so graphite was the first one to come into the market and I did see in 87, a composite, maybe made out of glass, fiberglass, hollow stick, like a one piece from Sherwood, but it was out only for maybe a few months. It just didn't do well. It was selling for, I think, $38 at the time. But this is the first, first innovative, one of the first, they had the 400 and this is 700. And they just had a standard hosel. So from there, a company like Fontaine came out, then Easton got onto it too. So Easton started making shafts, mid, mid 90s you're talking, there's not that many companies making graphite shafts, but they just, it was getting popular. A lot of guys wanted a lighter shaft. And this, this one here is an Easton Kevlar. This one would have been what Paul Correa would have used. And as you can see, this is Kevlar. Kevlar holds up really well. That's why Z-Bubbles were so popular because they didn't break that easy. And they really made them well. And it's, it's light. For back in the day, these were light. And you're supposed to use a heat gun. So at the time, heat guns got popular. People weren't using the torch anymore for these. Um, then you put the blades in. And you could switch companies. So a lot of the companies like Easton did not want you to put a Christian blade on. They, they did want you to use their product. And some of the guys like certain, you know, patterns or they like a certain material. So they switched, they didn't care, but they, they wanted you to use Easton or all the companies were like that. You got to use the blade. They prefer that you did that for advertisement. Um, then 
what happens here is 1996 that eastern ultralights out 97 you got the t-flux and here we go graphite comes on the scene 1998 1998 graphite comes out two companies innovative easton only two companies to make blades out of graphite and at the time i was talking to ray ferraro i know him and he said in the nhl right now it was 1988 he said only five or six guys can have a graphite blade everybody else cannot get it only the top superstars can get it five or six guys in the whole league and i asked him well what does it cost he's like to make a pattern was around ten thousand dollars at that time per player to make one pattern so it was just like a sock basically they resin you know they put the resin it's like it dressed it like a sock they had the aluminum mold and then they just uh baked it that's how they made it so this was uh i don't have very many of these i just have this one the innovative i don't have any eastons at that time you know some of the guys were using graphite but not everybody just some of them for at that time and then came out after that easton came out with this t-flex the tapered so this is what started the whole thing you see this tapered shaft is thinner and from this is what became the one piece stick this was why it was created so these were not popular the reason is you go to a hockey shop you could not find tapered blades they were just not easy to find and again tapered means this is thinner right here otherwise not going to fit it would fit into this one but not into this one so what easton decided to do since we have the graphite blade they decided to make the synergy now this is a broken synergy i have one piece next to it to show you but this is the original synergy the original one actually was dark gray but this is how the synergy looked and this came out around end of 2000 the year 2000 and it got so popular that everybody wanted one just to try one they were fascinated that there was a graphite one piece and it was light 460 grams back then was considered light and it retailed for 150. so that was the most expensive stick 150. and at the time there was no grip there was none of that it was just a standard gloss you know and uh graphite layered hollow shaft and a lot of people said you know what you can't really feel the puck well as a wood stick so there was still those old school guys that didn't want to switch they just want to stick with the wood um i did try one when it first came out uh they did modify the sticks all like a lot of companies problem was the blades were breaking they would like have cracks in it right away so they modified fixed that problem a lot of companies did that so here's what it looks like one piece so here's what we're talking about one piece now if you see the stick here if you see this tapered right there it's thinner that's because of that t-flex that t-flex wasn't selling so then they decided to make it into this where it became a one piece they put the blade in the shaft and sometimes you could see see that line right there in the middle that's the blade inserted into the shaft and you can't see it it's it's really a two-piece stick but they hide it and it becomes like a one piece the glue is like a certain kind of glue that they use it's like a permanent type and it doesn't uh, come out sometimes i heard that they were popping out but not much so you can see that line i don't know if you can see it in the camera there's a line right through the s that's the blade that's actually a blade and a shaft uh, so this took off i mean then companies got on board a lot of companies got on board on this time and uh ccm everybody started making you know one piece sticks uh, at this time wood sticks are kind of dying out uh, a lot of companies uh are no longer in business christians are no longer in business because uh they didn't do well with the graphite market it's a it's a tough market out there and it takes a lot of advertisement and a lot of you know getting the right players to use your stick that's a huge nhl guys using it and it promotes for the kids that want it so this one here came out around 2010 i'm guessing so as you see there's a miniature stick so we're talking knee hockey sticks now 
These came out maybe five, six years ago. They call knee hockey sticks. They're graphite with a blade. These kids can play in the house on their knees. These are miniature sticks. I mean, they got creative. I mean, look at this warrior. It's a beautiful stick. It's not full size. It's maybe about a foot and a half, two feet long. Thing's awesome. Never had this as a kid. I, we had the wood, cheap wood ones or the cheap plastic ones, but these things are awesome. It's got a curve. It's awesome. So after that, the sticks got into, you know, probably between this, this one, and here they started adding grip to the stick. So they added grip. As you can see, this one has grip. Look at the, the texture of grip. So the hands don't slide on the stick. So grip was added to sticks. It's just basically a silicone that they use and it helps the players. They don't have to put any kind of wax or anything on that. It's just, it's, um, the, every company has different style of grips and uh, different textures different colors. And this, is, this one maybe came out maybe a couple years ago. Now right here is probably the most modern one that I have. It's a Nexus Bauer. So right about now, these sticks are a lot lighter than what they used to be. Flex is very important for players now. Back then it wasn't. Curve, they have standard curves. Pretty much every company has like six, seven curves that they all have similar. So they try to make them similar for everybody that they, they everybody knows their the curves out there. Again, this doesn't have a blade, this is from a broken one piece. This one here has grip on it. Most of the sticks today you're gonna find have grip, very few don't. But a lot's changed in sticks. As far as price goes, I mean, prices have skyrocketed. You know, from the time maybe this stick right here maybe cost maybe 25 cents or maybe 20 cents and then here you're talking maybe six dollars five bucks for a stick then here you're getting into about maybe twelve dollars then right here you're getting about maybe 18 bucks right here you're getting about maybe 25 to 30 shafts are maybe about uh, 35 40 bucks so now right about here we're getting into about 50 60 dollar range then a little bit more, maybe $80 right here, 80, 90 bucks. Boom, Synergy, $150 all day long. A little bit more, you know, 175, 200, 225 maybe. But don't know what the miniature stick is. Now we're talking $300, you know, 350, so 350, so, I don't know, maybe one day sticks will be 500 bucks a piece, but if it's a 30 day warranty, I just don't think it's enough for a $500 stick. On the, and it's hard to find replacement blades. It's not that difficult, but they're not making them as much. You're gonna have to look online to find those. But this is the timeline of sticks that I thought of making, and I could be wrong on some of this. I do apologize. It is very difficult because I don't have anything written down. I just remember things and uh, this is what I know. Thank you for watching my video.